Hi, Oddings. Do you want to hear something thrilling? The Return of Ghost Hunters is out now, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. and followed by Psychic Kids at 10 p.m. 15 years after introducing the world to the field of authentic paranormal investigation, Ghost Hunters returns to television now on A&E. The series that terrified and captivated fans for 11 seasons will follow one of the original team leaders, Grant Wilson, and his hand-picked group of professional ghost hunters as they use their decades of field experience to investigate hauntings across the country. Engaging forensic experts, historical records, and the most innovative technology of Available, the new squad will help everyday people who are struggling with unexplained supernatural phenomena. Psychic Kids will follow Ghost Hunters with all new episodes featuring past psychic kids from the original show, who are returning as successful adults to empower a new generation of young psychics. They will spend time with the children and their families to assist them in taking control of their paranormal abilities, as well as showing them the remarkable power of their immense gifts. Be sure to tune in to A&E as the network returns to paranormal programming on Wednesdays with Ghost Hunters at 9 p.m. and Psychic Kids at 10 p.m. Hey, I'm Sapphire. Wanna hear something scary? Don't invite a dummy. The following story was inspired by Chan. I live in Jamaica. Here, everyone has ghost stories, or as we call them, duppy stories. My obsession with duppy began when I was 11, when I was at my grandma's funeral. There was nobody in attendance except me, my little sisters, Tanya and Nina, my mom, and my uncle, Louis. They lowered my grandma's coffin into the ground, and my uncle placed an upside-down shrub on the coffin, roots pointed up. I looked up at my mom, who was staring intently at the grave. Mom, what is that? She was stone-faced and said nothing. My uncle Louis put his hand on my shoulder. Little Chan, when people die, the good soul goes up to heaven and the bad soul stays in the ground. After three days, the bad soul's shadow rises up and walks the earth as a duppy. He continued, if the shrub faces down, the shadow gets confused and stays put. But if the shrub faces right side up, he shook his head and clicked his tongue. My mother became enraged. Stop telling her that shit, she hissed. From that day on, Duppy were all I could think about. I followed my Uncle Lewis around, asking him to tell me more Duppy stories. Duppy? He laughed. They're as real as me or you, but they're all bad. They're mean. They can grab you, hurt you, or worse. Don't look for Duppy, and never ever invite a Duppy to come to you. But are there any cute Duppy? I asked. You wouldn't like them. They stink of death, and they have no face. Just wide, grinning teeth. He made a scary face and I screamed. Then we both laughed hysterically. The next day, I skipped through the graveyard carrying a basket of flowers and placed them one by one in front of 13 tombstones. With each one I placed, I said, Duppy, Duppy, come to me. A week later, the worst possible thing happened. Uncle Lewis was killed in town by a mugger. The culprit got away and was never found. And just like that, we were burying another relative. I was given the job of placing the shrub on the coffin. I thought about my Uncle Lewis and how I would do anything to see him again. I placed the shrub on his coffin and uttered under my breath, Duppy, Duppy, come to me. We inherited my grandma's house from Uncle Lewis and my sister's mom and I moved in after the funeral. There was a coldness about my grandma's house. It was sad and smelled weird. The lights in some of the rooms didn't turn on, and what daylight came in through the windows was dimmed by the large trees outside. My mom became weirdly needy to me and my sisters. I would walk Tanya and Nina home from school and find my mom sitting on the veranda, waiting for us to get home. She smiled and welcomed us, but her eyes wore a secret pain. I think she didn't want to be alone inside the house. At night, the wind had begun to bellow and shake the walls. My mom would cook meals and they would become rotten when she turned her back on them. She dragged a cot into our room to sleep and abandoned her own room altogether. Then one day, my mom confronted me. 
She asked me, Chan, what direction did you plant the shrub on top of Uncle Lewis? I stammered. The, the way I was supposed to, with the, the roots pointing up. I lied. I see, she said with a calm fury. Pangs of guilt stung my skin. Later that night, the wind got so loud that the rattling of the roof woke me up. My mom and my sisters were sound asleep. I groped through the darkness to the kitchen and poured myself a glass of water. On my way back to the room, the wind built in intensity and the door to my mom's bedroom began to swing rapidly open and shut. I was too curious to turn away. I peeked through the door and there was just my mom's empty bed and personal things she hadn't bothered to remove. The trees thrashed violently outside the window. I took a few steps forward until I was standing at the center of the room. The wind erupted into a chorus and whistled louder than ever. I got a knot in my stomach as I smelled something rotten. I heard my own teeth chattering and my curiosity turned to pure dread. The closet door creaked ajar and what I saw turned my legs to quivering jelly. A hand with long pointy fingers curled around the closet door. My hands softened. I heard my water glass shatter on the ground. My body pivoted weakly towards the window. The moon came out from behind the clouds and twisting trees and revealed 13 silhouettes standing in the room with me. One for every flower I placed in the graveyard. They bore featureless faces and grinning mouths. Too stunned to run, I fell terrified to the ground, fumbling and clambering awkwardly to the exit on my hands, elbows, and knees. Bony fingers clawed at me and tried to pull me back. They scratched my skin as I struggled loose. A hand grabbed my ankle and almost yanked me away until I kicked for my life. Trembling, I finally scrambled through the door and slammed it shut behind me. The wind moaned in concert with labored gasps as the sound of hands battered the door. I began to weep as I nervously ran back down the hall. Mom, Tanya, Nina, we need to leave this house now. I opened the door to the bedroom where my family slept. In an instant, I felt my whole world drop away beneath me. There on the floor were the lifeless bodies of Tanya, Nina, and my mom. Above them stood a shadowy figure. It was my Uncle Lewis, but his warm eyes and comforting smile were gone now replaced with a terrifying grin and unearthly stench. He stepped towards me and said, Dappy, Dappy, come to me. Thank you to all of our patrons, especially Lewis, who had a character named after them in this week's episode. If you'd like to join our VIP program, visit patreon.com snarled. So a couple weeks ago, I had a booth at the horror convention Midsummer Scream, and I got to meet so many of you, and it was awesome. Lots of people who weren't familiar with the show came up and asked questions, and I made sure that they all left with one of my custom business cards from Vistaprint. It's more than just passing along your contact information. It's making a connection with a future fan or a future collaborator. Your next big opportunity is coming right now, and for just 10 bucks, Vistaprint gives you 500 per personalized cards with exactly the look you want. That's a low price to make a lasting impression. And because you can choose the colors, fonts, designs, and images, you can create something as unique and compelling as your business. I, for instance, made mine look like Ouija boards. Plug your information and logo into hundreds of fresh designs tailored to your type of company, or upload your original layout. Order and receive your cards in as few as three days. Your satisfaction is 100% guaranteed, or your money back. Vistaprint wants you to be able to own the now in any situation, which is why our listeners will get 500 high quality custom business cards starting at $9.99. Just go to vistaprint.com SS. Want more Something Scary? You can hear more stories over on the Something Scary podcast, available for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. The links are in the description below. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at somethingscary@snarled.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. Until next time. Sweet dreams.